Hello everybody, I'm so excited. Today we're gonna do our study over Exodus and Leviticus. I decided I'd throw these two in together because I realized how long I took last time for Genesis and I honestly wanna be a lot quicker because you guys read this on your own and then we come and discuss kind of a breakdown of what it was about and then I'm just gonna ask a few questions and basically that is the whole gist. I did not get ready for this video. Um, probably not gonna get ready for the next couple. Uh, actually, if you guys could send a little prayer out for my family um a couple of my sister's friends were diagnosed with covid she was around them this weekend uh monday i started to feel super sick monday was horrible um and kenna's not feeling good and my mom's not feeling good we're all staying on top of medicine but um i have an immune compromised system so if i do have covid i'm in the very early stages of it it can only go downhill from here, but thankfully I've been staying on top of medicine, really praying about it, and I've been feeling okay. Just a little bit of sore throat, headaches, and my body's really tired. So, um, just prayers for my sister's friends, for my sister, for my mom, and just for me that everything goes okay. Getting into our study today, still in my PJs, you know. We're gonna go ahead and jump into the book of Exodus. So, Exodus is the second book of the Bible, uh, second of the Torah, it's written by Moses, and this is about the deliverance of God's chosen people out of Egypt. So, the people of Israel, God says, these are my people, I don't want them in Egypt, we're gonna lead them out of here. And he appoints Moses, this boy who his mother spared because they were under this mean king, uh, where basically they wanted to kill all the firstborn sons. but. They wanted, they saved Moses um, and put him in a basket in the Nile River and eventually he was found and he was raised as a shepherd. Um, so Moses is special but he does have some past so he did kill someone and then people started realizing he killed someone and he was pretty terrified so Moses was scared. God doesn't use perfect people. God chose Moses and said hey dude, like basically you're gonna go on a crazy journey, your life's gonna be full of purpose and I'm gonna use you. And Moses is like, oh God, um, I'm not a good speaker. And he starts making up all these excuses of why he's not good enough, but God uses him anyway. Just like God chose us to do certain things, even though we don't feel qualified, God has a purpose for us. And so we just have to trust him that it's gonna work out. Basically, this journey is not over in Exodus or Leviticus. So Exodus starts with, God trying to get Israel's people out of Egypt. Unfortunately, the Pharaoh is like insane. Like nobody, nobody, he's not letting any of his, any of the people go, um, but Moses keeps persisting. But the Lord says, he li literally says, he's going to harden Pharaoh's heart. So each time that God sends a plague, Pharaoh still says no. And we're actually just gonna read the plugs in order. So, oh gosh, my highlighter's just spilled. I took some notes. I just wanna read the plugs with you so you can see literally how much God was sending towards them and Pharaoh still wouldn't let the people go. So Moses basically, well, first off, God God was showing Moses his power. He had a staff, did this, turned into a snake. Moses was scared, turned back into a staff. So God really showed him his glory. So Moses did go to Pharaoh and try these things and the magicians were able to do it. So finally he kept persisting, doing his own thing, and eventually the magicians weren't able to do it, but Pharaoh still had a very hardened heart. He, God promises deliverance and says, listen, I'm gonna send these plugs. So God first turned water into blood, the frogs, which the magicians did. Then he sent gnats, the magicians could not do the gnats. Then he sent flies, then their livestock dies. Then he sends boils, then hail, then locusts, then darkness, and then threatens that the firstborn child will die. And unfortunately, the Pharaoh still was like not letting the people go. But as soon as this last threat happened, finally the Pharaoh said, okay, fine, let my people, or let them go, Moses go ahead. He takes the people and they start heading out of, of Egypt. Unfortunately, Pharaoh then is like, no, why'd I do that? So um, Pharaoh goes ahead and chases them, uh, basically, Exodus 14, 14 says the Lord will fight for us. And he does. So as they're leaving Egypt, uh, they come up to the Red Sea. I'm sure you guys kind of know this story a little bit. Pharaoh's coming, all the people behind him are coming and Moses parts the Red Sea with his staff with God's power and they walk through it peacefully on dry land. But Pharaoh and all of his people start chasing them down and God sends the water to go over those people and they all die. But guess what? 
God's chosen people, the Israelites, are all safe. So that is just, I think that's amazing. Like, obviously that's sad, but God gave so many chances to Pharaoh and he did not decide for Pharaoh to do some of these things, but he did say he was gonna harden Pharaoh's heart, but there are so many chances given to Pharaoh. So, and God does give us unlimited chances, but we can't take this for granted. Like, we really can't. We just can't say, like, oh, my God will give you so many chances. It doesn't matter what I do in this life. It does matter. Um, don't don't take those for granted because we are, like, the luckiest people to have that many chances. We cannot abuse them. Basically, they start walking away, and they're, like, so happy. Yay! And then things start to go downhill. So, the Israelites become really hungry um, and thirsty. So, basically, the Lord, like, everyone kind of starts complaining and... We see that these people complain a lot throughout this book. <laughs> so the so God, of course, there's a staff on the rock, the water spurts out, they get water. And then God sends manna, which we don't really know a lot about. It's kind of like mysterious, but it looks like a frost, I guess, on the ground. And they were able to collect it, eat a ton of it. People who had little were still satisfied. People who had more did not have too much. People who had little did not have too little. They were all satisfied. They were, they were full. So God kept providing for them while they were on this, um, while they were on this, journey and then basically um they israel israel basically defeated amalek which you you i think amalek is that what you it's kind of what you say um, the ten commandments are given so we're going to just go through this really quick no gods before him which isn't god uh do not misuse his name keep sunday uh sabbath day holy honor your father and mother do not murder do not commit adultery do not steal do not bear a false witness against your neighbor you shall not covet anything that is your neighbor's. Um, and then all these laws kind of, did I just read all those? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Why don't I feel like I, I read nine, didn't I? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Hmm? Which one did I miss? Oh, okay. You shall not make idols and do not um, put any gods before them or like these other ones. Anyways, so that all happens in Exodus and then there's this whole thing where basically Moses writes down a lot of laws and that's kind of like what the book of Torah is, is a lot of laws, especially Leviticus, which is like a big scary book for a lot of people. I honestly was pretty scared to read it, but I'm glad I did and I'm glad I, you know, read all that because I actually got a lot out of it, even though in the New Testament where Jesus basically gives us a new commandment, one, and says, get rid of all the laws of Moses, all you need to do is love me and love your neighbor. And that's basically what Jesus says. But this is the Old Testament. This is before Jesus was sent down. God basically gave them all of these laws to keep them holy and to make sure that they did everything they could, could to get the best out of, life, out of their life. God wasn't just like, here's a ton of laws. Um, just do them, but we'll see how you do. Like, it's like, we'll, we'll see. Like, if you do these, maybe you'll be good enough. God is not labeling them as not good enough if they don't do these but god put these there for them gave them an opportunity and said if you do all of these things like you're sure to get the best out of your life fortunately lots of people did follow these commandments and some people did not and they god is judged so he will say their punishment as you see like in leviticus it does talk about like an eye for an eye and sorry i'm kind of like mashing these two together i just really want to like get to the questions maybe um as you guys can see because you read this on your own before you came here so uh, Leviticus, so after, let's just really quickly, after all of these laws, Moses says this, the deliverance, they're going out of Egypt, um, then we just see they get to Mount Sinai, which is like super, super important, Mount Sinai is very important, uh, in basically the first book of the Bible, uh, because that is where they built the tabernacle. I, my eyes glazed over a little bit what reading that, and it started it in Leviticus, especially like the first part of Leviticus, but he gives the most specific measurements to Moses of exactly what he needs to do with the tabernacle. And honestly, I'm glad that I saw that because, and I'm glad I read that because we we see that this is exactly what God wanted. He's detailed. He's not going to leave us confused. <laughs> he literally tells us everything we need to know. He doesn't say anything that will kind of make us like, I don't, well, I don't get it, God, so I'm just not going to do it. He's very detailed and he will tell us everything we need to do. And if we ask him, because maybe we are still confused, he will tell us what we need to do. So, basically, um, they spent 40 days and 40 nights on this mountain. This is in Exodus. Um, and 
Here's the parts of the tabernacle. I'm just going to read them really quickly for you guys. Uh, the Ark of the Covenant, the table for bread, the gold lampstand, the bronze altar, the court, the oil for the lamp, uh, priest garments, the altar of incense, the census tax, the bronze basin, the anointing of oil, oil and incense. And then, unfortunately, literally after all this, the people of Israel decided to make a false idol and they began to worship it. And Moses begged God not to bring laugh upon them and the, or wrath upon them and the, and the Lord did so so he listens to us like if we really really ask him for something like he will listen and he's not going to turn away from us and say well it's things i don't care like he's he listens to us and he provides so um he struck them with a plague as a punishment instead but uh that's just to show them that he's real and um it's like god is like while god is god is faithful and god is going to be god is good we also see that if you do fall away from God, you'll see like different things happening in your life that really can only be pointed back to God. One of my favorite uh, verses from Exodus is, my presence will go with you and give you rest. Um, we also see God knows us all by name. Uh, his face is a mystery. I mean, we see that Moses saw his back and uh, Moses' face was like glowing and radiant when he spoke with God. So when he came back, people were like, um, what the heck? <laughs> that is because God saw, I mean, Moses saw God's back. Like he was able to speak with him and his face was just radiant. Everyone was like, whoa, what's that about, dude? And it's because he saw the Lord. A couple um, words that describe the Lord here and it's gracious, merciful, slow to anger, and forgiving. And those are four, just four characteristics of the many that, uh, that God has us. And forgiving is like our, the one that we're most lucky to have. So that's basically summing up Exodus really quickly for you guys because I really want to get to the questions. Um, so for Exodus, I want you guys to think about what leadership traits did Moses have that uh, during his time in the wilderness that would lead him to be a great leader for all the people, uh, all the Israelites. So think about those characteristics. Um, I, I honestly think that's super important because while he wasn't a perfect person, he did have leadership qualities that God blessed him with and he did, he was able to lead these people um, and be a very, very, very well-rounded servant to God, even though at first he was thinking like, oh, I'm not good enough. Like God still gave him this purpose and Moses fulfilled it and listened to everything God said. And then we also see the Passover, which happens in the 10th plague. Like if you would would put, would put blood on your, um, of a lamb, I'm pretty sure, on your door, um, then your firstborn would not die so think about how does this symbolize jesus being our passover lamb i mean they both have the covenant of blood so just think about that i really really like that question um definitely think about that and really really dig deep uh into that question and then going back to what moses uh felt like he weren't wasn't qualified for have you ever been called to do something that you didn't feel like you were qualified for and how did that go try to think about try to really think about that time and how it shaped you as a person today even if it wasn't that big of a task just really think about that question okay and now we're just going to talk about leviticus uh, a little bit more and then just a couple questions for that one too so i am going to flip <laughs> to leviticus to see how this started out because i didn't take notes on this because i was like honestly lost so basically leviticus is a ton of uh laws it, it's literally just a book of laws that um, the Lord gave to Moses to write down at Mount Sinai. So he gives us all these laws, like I said, he's very detailed so that people get the best life that they can and walk with the Lord. And then they'll see all of his merc merciful blessings. And basically it starts off with the law for burnt offerings, the grain offerings, the peace offerings, the sin offerings, guilt offerings. I'm just reading these as the, as the, 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 pre, the priest's offerings, and then the, the, the conservation of Aaron and his sons, and then the Lord will accept Aaron's offering, and they were, they had to listen to God, and then they could transform, so I thought that was really interesting. And then we see that the two sons of Aaron died, so we have to be really, really sensitive to what God is asking us to do, because he does have full authority, so make sure you're, like I said, you're just really listening to what God has to say to you. Doesn't mean if you hear something wrong, like you're gonna die. Like thankfully we have Jesus, like he was sent down and uh, basically everyone's life's changed. So um, 
but God is the same yesterday, today, forever. Always keep that in mind as well. Then there's laws about leprosy, um, which in the New Testament is like really awesome. I only read a little bit of the New Testament on my own, um, but basically, you know, Jesus healed lepers and leprosy isn't like a disgrace, but that's how it was seen. Thankfully, there is uh, the laws for cleansing lepers, you know, be able to give people authority on the earth to help cleanse them and make them clean. So a lot of these laws in Leviticus are becoming unclean to clean and how God says you need to get there to here from unclean to clean. There's laws about everything like bodily discharges, um, kind of gross, but whatever. Laws for cleaning houses. And then we get to the day of atonement when, you know, they brought in. And then there's laws about eating blood. So sorry, if you're a vampire, you can't do that anymore. <laughs> Just kidding, I'm kidding. Well, I'm not kidding. Um, and then there's laws about um, uh, sexual relations, uh, about the, how the Lord is holy. And then I really, really loved, um, I loved Leviticus chapter 19, uh, verse nine to 18. So we see this like, already starting in the in the in the old testament saying love your neighbor as yourself so we cannot hate other people we need to show them god's love too and hopefully help transform their hearts um it says like don't steal from them or uh if they're if they're poor if, if they're poor help them out like don't don't like take them in for profit or anything just like be kind to other people we see him saying that in um we see that here. Kindness for poor brothers. Um, so definitely read that. That's um, Leviticus 25:35. Yeah, 25:35. Um, and then basically, I also really encourage you to make sure you really, really read and listen to um, Leviticus chapter 19, verse 19 through 37, because this like really like this is all statutes. They, he really sums them up like really like. Just read it, you won't be like, okay, okay, okay. He really just sums it up here, so definitely read that if you can. Um, love strangers as yourself even. Don't, just because they're um, a stranger, like these people were the Israelites in Egypt, God still had his hand on His hand on them. So love other people as well, uh, whether they're strangers or not. Um, and then also just like about like, talks about mediums, um, people who curse their mother, father, we should be holy. And then he talks about the feasts. So there's seven feasts. So there's the Passover. Um, and I'm just gonna read these really quick and then we'll get into the questions. Um, so there's the feasts here. So the Passover begins the entire festival on the 14th day of the first month, which is April. Um, it represents deliverance from bondage in Egypt based on the miracles God performed through Moses. Then there's the Feast of First Fruits, and by the way, the Feast of Passover, it also comes back in the New Testament as well, so um, keep that in mind. Um, the Feast of the, and those are the first two, the Passover and the Unleavened Bread. Feast of the First Fruits takes place on the day after the Sabbath of the Feast of the Unleavened Bread. The purpose of this feast is to thank God for the fertility of the land that he provided to the Israelites. The Feast of Weeks, um, also known as the Pentecost or Shavuot uh, in Hebrew, it's, a cel it's celebrated as a remembrance of God giving the laws to Moses 50 days after the Sabbath following the Passover. Um, the fifth is the Day of Atonement. Uh, the Day of Atonement is the most holy of days for the Jewish people. It falls on the 10th day of the seventh month, September or October. The Day of Atonement is a day of confession and of wiping the slate clean in order to start over with the new year. Uh, sixth is the Feast of Trumpets. The Feast of Trumpets is celebrated on the first day of the seventh month, again, September, October. It is a day where trumpets are blown throughout the land and no work is to be done. And he says that super repetitively throughout each of these feasts, like do not do any ordinary work. Do not work, do not work. He wants us to have a good life, not centered around work. We need to make it centered around God. So just the Feast of Trumpets is more, it's rest and worship. That's basically the Feast of Trumpets. So that sounds really nice. <laughs> the Feast of Booths was a time of celebration on the 15th day of the seventh month. Uh, a lot of this is September, October, and it lasts seven days, but in reality, it's celebrated for eight days. Uh, they were to look back at the 40 years of wandering in the wilderness, and they were commanded by God to rejoice over the fact that he provided them with a roof over their heads while they didn't know where they were going. So those are all of the feasts, all of the seven feasts that God says uh, his people should celebrate um, back in Leviticus. Um, and, and obviously we can, this is where, this is a good question. Um, do you feel obliga obligated as a 
Christian, I don't know, maybe you're reading this, you're Catholic or whatever, whatever you identify yourself with, do you feel obligated that we need to do these feasts? Uh, if so, why or why not? I'm not gonna share my opinion on that because I don't think I have one yet, um, but I don't see that it's something that we regularly do. So I guess, um, I guess that's something I wanna dig into with myself as well. Um, yeah, basically the Leviticus, uh, it's just about dedicating and um, worshiping God. And uh, there's basically, this is like the only book like this that there is in the Bible, just filled with all these laws to make sure that we are getting the best out of life that we can on God's people. He really just wanted to make sure that they were getting the best out of life. Um, and then um, just the last question that's gonna wrap this video up for Leviticus is after reading this book, do you think your life reflects holiness? Um, and why or why not do you believe that? Um, I think there's many parts in my life that I can definitely work on, uh, many <laughs> parts of my life, uh, but we see that, especially we're gonna see in numbers, which I haven't started reading yet, but I did just do a little research on it. Uh, numbers, basically, we see that God allows people and honors to go their own way, um, but obviously it's not like he's like, oh, good for you, but he allows it. Um, and I think that sometimes in life we decide to go our own way and God will allow it, but we see the difference of how that lifestyle is compared to people who have probably the right lifestyle about things, not perfect, but more right. And um, you see the differences and it's really just up to us at the end of the day to decide how we want to live and we should do it according to what God has to say, but we find that super hard sometimes as human beings because we're not perfect and um, God still has his favor on us and he still walks with us every single day. Even when we push him away and we say, I don't want you anymore, he's still there. He's not going to leave. Um, there's no getting away from that. There's no escaping it, um, but that's like the hugest blessing. So um, definitely think there's a piece of dust floating in the air. Definitely think about these questions. I can't grab it. <laughs> Definitely think about these questions. Make sure to read Exodus and Leviticus. I know I did those in the same video. So if you need to do two weeks uh, of reading those, definitely do it. I'll link some um, audio below. Um, I was just able to divide the audio up into each, like however long I wanted to do a day, which has made it so much easier to read it because you just follow along with the audio and you don't get stumbled upon things and keep rereading things because you're lost. The audio has really helped me. So I'm gonna link those below. And I'm also gonna link just a breakdown of each book of the Bible, maybe to help further your understanding. And um, yes, so that's what I'm gonna do. So I hope you guys enjoyed this breakdown. I'm excited to do numbers in Deuteronomy. I don't know if I'm gonna throw those into the same video. We'll see uh, how much content I really want to break down on each. But um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, and I will see you guys next time. Peace. Thank you.